we're on hey killer b nation we're gonna give a few minutes for everybody to sign on uh reed booth here killer b guy hosh killer b guy he's behind the camera we be killer b guys we are uh in douglas arizona this morning and uh we, i'm gonna give a few minutes for everybody to sign on of course those of you that know us will just simply recognize us good morning we have a huge removal this morning uh, we're talking killer bees here in Cochise County in southern Arizona and uh, these damn things have been meaner than hell. They are they're in all the lower 48 states now. Uh, they killed a beekeeper in Connecticut and they are here in Cochise County big time and we have a shed that we just went and looked at. Hosh and I just went and looked at and from what we can tell get this three hives under one shed. This is a total nightmare because when one hive gets riled up even though each hive is an enemy of every other hive when one hive gets riled up the attack pheromones the same and so they all get riled up and so this is horrible because we are right in a neighborhood and they just killed the neighbor's dog this is not good like a few days ago so Everybody's on high alert. The bees are ready for war. I mean, they killed the neighbor's dog. My God, a great big German Shepherd. But they stung somebody up. That's and they stung up, yeah. Stung. Oh, and they also stung up a, a guy uh, trying to mow the lawn out here. Hey, how many times have we heard that? And so uh, they stung up the guy, chased him off mowing the lawn. And then a few days later, actually, just a few days ago, killed the neighbor's dog. So they've proven how aggressive they are. And that's the problem with these Africanized hives, because they're all Africanized in the state of Arizona. Genetically Africanized killer bees, the way it is. And yes, they're honeybees. They make twice as much honey. Now, a bright note <laughs> on all this is that with three hives under this shed, we should get a shitload of honey this morning. We should get a lot of comb. Never been touched, right? So we're actually going to get the thermal imaging out and uh, we'll get the other camera going so you guys can watch and we'll look at the floor but the first thing we're going to do is get our expanding foam and go out and you've seen us do this before with sheds where we I, I mean this is a shed full of killer bees guys this is just a complete nightmare we go outside and wherever their front door is wherever they're coming and going that's where the guard bees are we're going to seal that up we're going to knock down those guard bees hopefully so that they won't be able to send the attack pheromone through the hive which is like the ooga horn in the submarine and so we're gonna uh, seal up all their outside entrances around that bottom of that shed so they can't just come pouring out of their front door we're gonna go inside the shed then and close the doors and bring our light in and uh, hopefully we can close the door enough so they don't come pouring out in the neighborhood here it's just scary stuff guys and uh, cut, drill holes where we saw with the thermal imaging, you know, wherever they are. We should get out uh, some automotive undercoating and mark where we see with the thermal imaging where the hives are. Because okay. the thermal imaging, you see a beehive throws a major heat signature. So we're going to be able to see between the, the floor joists right where the comb is. You'll be amazed at this, guys. If you haven't seen it before on our channel, it's really cool. It's really weird. So uh, we're going to do that, isolate where they are, seal up their front doors so they hopefully can't come out torturing the neighborhood. Every, all the neighbors have been warned, take, took their animals in and everything. And then we go in and drill, you've seen us do, do it before, drill our spade bit holes, cut up the floor, remove the comb. I'm gonna be taking breaks in here with the air conditioning because as you guys know, I'm susceptible. I've been doing this for 30 years and don't try this at home, okay? Whatever you do. We're professionals, licensed, we do that, been doing it for 30 years. Do not try this at home. These are deadly. Do not try anything that we do at home, period. I don't care what it is. Uh, it's just deadly, 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 and you'll get yourselves hurt. Do not try this. So we have to throw in those disclaimers and shit, because we're hoping TikTok leaves us on so we don't get booted off. I don't know why somebody was complaining. Of, I don't know why, actually, but they've been threatening to screw with us and ban us. Ay, ay, ay. All we're doing is saving people's lives and animals and shit, so it, whatever. Life is weird. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to throw on my net. Host is already suited up and looks like he's ready to go. Uh, i got to throw on my, my don't rag and my uh, other glove and uh, do a little bit of taping. So you've seen us do that shit before. Our PPE is very important and of course you've got to have your, we call it PBE, <laughs> personal B equipment instead of personal protective, same. Uh, and so yeah, then 
I'm afraid all hell is going to break loose here in a little bit, guys. They already killed a dog. Um, if so anybody has a couple of questions before we get started, we uh, don't mind answering just a couple. Not going to do a lot of them. Um, no questions at this point. Okay, right on. How many folks we got with us? Right now we got about a thousand. All right. Stick with us, guys. Um, uh, the shit's about to hit the fan. Well, the bee is about to hit the fan. Killer bees under a shed, uh, three hives uh, under the floor of a shed. Uh, it looks like one on the right side, one at the front, and one in the back left corner. And it, it's going to be a nightmare. Uh, we should get a lot of honey out of the deal, but these killer bees are horrible. Every week in this county in the summer on average, just in Cochise County, they kill a dog, a horse, or a goat. And just killed this dog over here. So uh, come on along with us. You guys stay tuned. We're not really going anywhere. Just stay tuned while I get my net on. See you guys in a second. There's hive number one. And then behind Hosh is hive number two. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Now let's go over here to hive number three and see how, if we can even see where it is. Um, well, that's interesting. I don't see a glow, do you? No. I don't understand because there definitely is one. All right. One, two, three. Three nasty killer beehives, killer bee nation. Oh, fuck. All right, here we go. Um, all right, so... Uh, now, this piece is all screwed down, which I am thankful for. Uh, oh, we got the light. Oh, ain't you something. Look at you. Oh, I hope she's on it. See, I hate this killer bee nation because we can't... Usually what we like to do is you well know us seal ourselves inside with them. Here, let me get under here. Uh, mm. There we go. Oh God, great of Holy shit, and the, and the camera. Get the cam oh my God, you guys gotta see this. This is what's so scary, guys, because now they're locked under there, okay? Oh my God, this is so horrifying. Because they're all locked under there and they know something's wrong. Oh, I have a nail on this because I can't. Okay. Well, I'm going to kneel on it. Look at this. Look at that, Killer Nation. This is so horrible. And there's just no way around it. Shit. It's the same thing. Horse piece. I mean, they're just. <laughs> you might have a point. I mean, when I pried it up, it wasn't all that bad, but we, since we're in our neighborhood, we really have to knock down a shit of these. Um, boy, oh boy. Oh, man. Okay, the best way to do this make sure no looky loose out there, nobody around. Nope. Thought I got stuck. Nope. Phantom stings. Wow, this is huge and mean. I don't like it. Uh, they're coming out of somewhere else, too. Well, this is enough, actually. You know what we have to do? Because it's so dangerous. You stomp on that. So seal it back down. Thank you. Now I'm going to knock down a bunch of these. I'm gonna, could you put the spade bit back onto the... Um, what I'm going to do is drill a hole and spray the spray adhesive in there. Because the aerosol will knock down the sheet load and make it so they can't fly make it safer to take this whole thing up because this is just the bomb i mean this is really and i don't mean that in a good way it's the bomb yeah right and we're going to lift this thing out of here okay a little bit more here there you go all right here we go guys no yep there you go that's it oh my god look at this holy shit can, can you lift it up all right here we go guys Oh my god, look at how old this is, guys. Look at this, look at this. Holy shit. I can't even believe it. All right, yeah, no lie. Yeah, I got it. Oh, Killer Bee Nation, the whole damn thing, the whole lid came off. Wow. Holy god, this is such an education. And you're not letting beehives stay in your yard. Oh my god, it's so deadly. Look at this. Look at this, guys. So that lighter comb, comb is brand new. Do not try this at home for obvious fucking reasons, you guys. Do not try this at home. Um, this dark stuff, that's 10, 15 years old. 
has to be to be that dark. See how light this stuff is, or even back here? The lighter, this is all pure honey. The lighter stuff is where the bees, um, when they when they first make the wax, it's white. It's actually clear. And then when they make the six-sided cells out of it, it's white. My God, I can't believe this. Can you? Look, look at them all hurting up here. The queen could be up here. See them all going up there, guys? No, there is. I don't give a shit about the queen. We're trying to mitigate the threat. The, the romance is over in case you guys haven't noticed. This is spray adhesive. We're not using any poison yet. Depends on how excited I get about the shit. Nice. Oh my god, look at that propolis. Years and years. I think we should go ahead and lay it back there. Yes, you want to put that back on the tripod, maybe? And, uh, and we'll move that light and we'll just lay this on its back. And that way we can uh, scrape the comb. All of our... Uh, Holy God, Killer Bee Nation. Is everything working, all the mics and everything? Good God. I'm sorry we can't answer any questions right now, guys, but duh. <laughs> right? Um, all right, and then our, yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, I, I got to, well, I think so. I got to see if this is loose over here. Tilt it my way more. Yeah, I see there was a screw I couldn't get to. All right, now let's go back, see if I can twist it off of there. Damn it. There we go. All right, slide it back your way. There you go. All right, now we're gonna lay her down right like that. There you go. Holy cow. Now, unfortunately, huh? The bins are right over here. Oh my god, guys. Killer bee honeycomb. Look at this. That's pure, untouched honey. Holy cow, guys, look at that hose. Oh, Is there any behind you that we should get? Yeah. Wow. This is okay, we'll make two piles. A lot of brood here. We'll make two piles, huh? Yeah, I don't know if oh, yeah. Thank you. Holy cow, that's all brood? Oh, look at that. What do we got? Partial? I don't, I'm not sure. Let me take a look. Okay. A lot of oh God, look at that, guys. So with these capped cells right here, that's where they raise the babies, and we can't use that. Look at all this. Oh my God, that's where all they raising the babies, all that that's right all there. Brood comb. Yeah. You can see from the caps, and the, so I guess in some countries it's edible. I'm not too prone for it. I'm gonna get a garbage bag. Yeah, for the brood. Yep, yep. And do we have a putty knife? Yep. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay, you guys, this is hive number one. I mean, just number one. Good Lord, huh? You can see why 30 years of doing this, you do not want to try this at home, period. Do not do it. These bees are deadly. They want to kill you and everything else. And, and also, the honeymoon's over. Bees are like individual cells of an organism. Oh, my God. And that's how they treat each other also. Is like individual cells of an organism. There's no romance. That's pure power, which is so energy packed and so good for you, it's ridiculous. And I'm good at ridiculous, damn it. Okay. This is amazing, Hosh. Holy shit. And that's just one height. I'm glad we brought extra bins. Yep. Hey. So this is how we scrape it up. We got more comb here, guys. Uh, we're going to be here a while. Yeah, we're going to be here a while. <laughs> so maybe some breaks answering questions. Oh, we're definitely going to take some breaks. In fact, yeah. Wow, this is a <laughs> this is a 10-pound piece of comb right here, guys. Can you show that to everybody? We have three of these damn things underneath this shed. As to requeening, excellent question, excellent thought. Not going to do anymore because in Arizona, anyway, it's a total temporary fix. Old beekeepers that requeen... I even stopped keeping bees. Just, uh, what was it? What was that? Uh, bees Gone Bad, Hosh? Yes. Bees Gone Bad. Okay, Killer Bee Nation. You guys got to look that up. Temporary fix because it's next to impossible to keep your bees from becoming Africanized in the state of Arizona anyway. And even old beekeepers that are have been adamant and hated me for decades because I killed bees. 
um, I finally acquiesced because recently a gal who had kept bees in old Bisbee and was a third generation, she actually knew pretty much what she was doing, really knew what she was doing with European bees, not with these guys. So she had her bees right in old Bisbee and it's not illegal yet but I think we're going to have to think about that because people still have a lot of romance about these damn things and they lit up, they became Africanized and they sent two people to the hospital and stung 13 including fire department and police. Yeah, no, you don't want to do that. That's not right. That's not good. And you get in a hell of a lot of trouble because in the state of Arizona, uh, Arizona Revised Statute 36-601, if you have a feral hive on your property, as in unmanaged, legally you have to have it removed. Legally. I am an expert witness. And every case I've ever been on, the uh, person that had the bees loses. Period. Because it's so straightforward. Uh, the state hates these things, and so do I. Because uh, they're not, these are not our grandfather's honeybees. It is over, unfortunately. But that's in Lomito Loca. Um, so, no requeening, no relocating. That's bullshit. Also, <coughs> I do want to talk to the point of, oh, we need honeybees to live. Yeah, we're putting the bee back in BS is what we're doing. Uh, no, we don't. Now, I know people are getting up in arms already, figuring out a trip to Arizona to punish me for my bad behavior. <laughs> Come on down anytime, y'all. Um, <laughs> anyway, okay. Think think about it this way. Uh, what what are the name? What is the name of the nice bees that we lived with forever? At least in our lifetimes. Uh, European, right? European honeybees. Okay. Well, say it again. European. Hmm. Oh, it's right there in the name. It's not Midwestern honeybees. <coughs> it's not Southwestern honeybees. It's not Alabama honeybees. It's European. They're invasive to the Western Hemisphere. They do not belong here. They are uh, they 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 were brought by Europeans. They don't belong here. Holy shit, huh? I don't really know, but it, you want me to go check? Well, I'm going to actually because I'm going to have to take a little break and get some water. Uh, well, I don't see anybody yet. I don't know. Huh. How are you doing, Hosh? I'm good. You want to take a mic uh, and maybe do a little cutting and answer some questions or something? And I gotta go sit in the air. I'm uh, having issues. All right. Killer bees are Africanized honeybees. They are uh, the Latin for the subspecies is Apis mellifera scutella. They are uh, an invasive species. They were created in a Brazilian laboratory in 1957. They escaped and uh, migrated all over South America, completely saturated Central America, and eventually hit the United States in 1993. By 1998, 100% of the feral honeybee population in the state of Arizona had been Africanized, aka had become killer bees. And this happens a couple different ways. They breed them out by mating with the queen on her mating flight, or they invade a European honeybee hive and uh, kill all the bees inside and then take over. And so that hybridized bee came to be called Africanized bees because the majority, oh my goodness, look at that honeycomb. Some of it's capped, a lot of it's nectar. That's just beautiful. So, 90, you know, 98%, 96, 98% of the genetics were from the African honeybee. Now, African honeybees by themselves, without, without any genetic tampering, are actually slightly more aggressive than the European bees but um, really not that bad. It's somehow, and we don't know why, um, but somehow the hybridization process, that mixing of the DNA from the bees from Africa and the bees from Europe, somehow created this super bee. Yeah, the honey is delicious, and you can get some at killerbeeguy.com. Type in KBG1 for the coupon code, and we'll give you 20% off. 
So <clears throat> we've got this hybridized bee, and they're hyper aggressive. They kill people. They kill. They just overreact. Uh, you know, you can see we just stepped up to the hive today, um, and uh, you know they come out in attack mode. Uh, they're hyper aggressive. They kill people. They kill livestock. They killed the neighbor's dog in this particular spot, which is one of the reasons we got called. There was somebody doing some landscaping work. They stung him up, and then they proceeded to sting the neighbor's dog to death. You can't tell by looking. You have to get them genetically tested in a lab. It's a recessive, or a, it's a dominant gene. So you have to get them lab tested in order to determine. But see, here's the thing, is that in 1998, we were sending samples to the, we were sending samples to the, um, to the labs here in Tucson to determine, hey, you know, what, what, what are we doing here? How, how much of the, these are, are Africanized, et cetera, et cetera. And in 1998, the labs came back and said, no, nope, it's a done deal. 100% of these hives, 100% of these bees are Africanized. It's over, stop sending us samples. And uh, that was the end of that. And so you can confidently, um, you, you can confidently trust that any of the wild honeybees you encounter in Arizona, at the very least, but I'm gonna say the desert southwest are killer bees. They are this hybridized bee. And uh, there it is. Yeah, let's do it. How's everybody doing out there? Yay! Oh, I cooled off enough I can, we can take up another one. Three damned hives in one shed. This is ridiculous. You here, guys. Can, I'm going to get this, uh, get my brain around what the hell's going on here, killer bee nation, huh? Holy shit. We got the lid for this. I think this is petty enough, don't you? Oh my God! Yeah, that's heavy enough, everybody. Put it outside in the shade. Yeah, we definitely we have to put them in the shade, everybody, because and we have to put a lid on them because if they aren't in the shade, of course they'll melt. Now they'll still be fine; they just won't be as pretty. We like pity when it comes to honey, honeys, honey. Oh, never mind. Anyway, um, and also there's such a thing called robber bees. Really awesome, huh? Now. It, it, this is really cool. Okay, class, pay attention. Damn it. <laughs> in a three mile radius from any hive, all the hives know about each other. All the beehives know about each other in a three mile radius. <laughs> it, but it's not so they can visit and, you know, get a cup of sugar. Honey. <laughs> well, it actually is. So they can steal it. They are Vikings, though. Thank you, Hosh. Here, we may as well lean that up against that wall. There we go. Oh, yeah. And we may as well lean it up against the wall, yeah. Um, in case they can steal honey from each other. They're Vikings. They will steal honey, period. And um, so we have what are called robber bees. Now, all of the bees flying around and everything, uh, I don't know what Hosh has been uh, talking about, but it's all true. Uh -huh. Did you talk about remnant bees at all? No. Okay, cool. Because everybody always asks, what happens to all these bees, you know, still dicking around, flying around and everything after we leave? Well, any bees that are left over from the war, <clears throat> whether they were out in the field working, or come back and they had or initially come out to try to kill us are called remnant bees because they're leftovers, the remnants of the hive. And so they um, they can't go anywhere else. They belong to that hive only. The only reason, like I said, that bees visit another hive is to steal honey. So they um, they will come and they can smell this. I've seen them empty a, um, a, a, a like a bucket a uh, five gallon bucket of, of honey in like three hours. It's astounding how much they can steal. Uh, were you gonna go get a, a sip? Yeah, yeah. Okay, get a drink. And then we're gonna cut up the, the rest of this, you guys. Um, well, one more anyway, and we'll see how I fare. Um, so, robber bees. We have to put a lid on them and put them in the shade because they will melt. And then, if the lid's not on them, robber bees will steal it all steal all the honey and take it home to their place and uh, wherever the hell that is and then we're out the honey so that's why we have to put a lid on it and um put it in the shade so hopefully it won't be that hot today 
going to be about 100 here in Douglas anyways. It's hotter than hell. And so, uh, yeah, that that's why we do that. Um, what else is going on here? My brain is a little scrambled, guys. I got overheated again. It's just horrible. I, I absolutely hate it. Uh, so, um, we're going to do <clears throat> cut up this next one. Now, you saw the thermal imaging about how how big these two these next two hives are they're pretty similar to this one I think maybe even a little bigger uh, again the same rules apply and it scares the hell out of me because we're not out of the woods yet by any means you saw how they started pouring out of when I tried to pry that board up that is what's going to happen with these other two hives because they're locked under there and they know whoa something's up they're all hot and bothered, and the you know alarm burn one's already gone through. The whole point was to seal them up so that all of them couldn't come out into the neighborhood. Although it's just a timeline thing, because obviously most of them did anyway. With three hives, it's so hard. It's so incredibly hard. It's all about pheromones with these guys. When the attack pheromone is sent through the hive, and everybody comes out to fight. They get so mad, and I've seen the air so saturated with attack pheromone, they're stinging birds flying overhead, literally, telephone poles, just mad as hell, and tires on trucks. It's just astounding how off the chain they go. So I turned that off so we wouldn't burn up the battery. It's oh, not it's burnt out. So Should we go ahead and do this one? Yeah. All right, here we go, guys. Okay. Now, they'll normally, if they're there, come start coming out, of course, because I see the light and they go they attack light at night. You can't do this at night. Well, you could But people always ask us this. Why don't you do it at night? Did you cover that hose? I did not. Okay. Well the main reason is we're too busy and The second reason is they attack light at night Well, I hit something there. That's interesting Hmm I guess that'd be about right, 16 inch centers, yeah. Oops. Damn thing. There we go. Okay, now I got a break right here. So this will be good if we can get this piece up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that's, that's excellent. Oh, here they come. See them, guys? Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Not sure what happened with that shit. Well, that's kind of cool. I thought we had a break right there. Isn't there a piece of... Yep, right there. All right, well, we might be able to pull this up. Have we got that, that pry bar? Thank you. I don't only know those guys. Thank you. Let's see if we can get down in here, get down on it. Uh, I mean, there could be some weird ass. Have we got that other pry bar, the big one? Oh, look at this comb all the way back here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Here we go, guys. Oh, whoop, honey. I caught it. Can you believe that? Look at this. This is huge. Holy cow. Have we got a bucket? Yeah. Thank you. Holy cow, guys. This is ridiculous. But, boy, am I good. We cut it right on the edge. Ha, <laughs> ha. That never happens. All right, very good. Yeah, we got some, uh... How do the remnant bees die? Oh, you guys are asking really good questions today. Thank you. That's awesomeness. Um, remnant bees. Okay, they're actually, they're like an amputated limb. Okay, literally. You can live without your uh, finger, say, for instance. But your finger cannot live without you. This is a problem. Oh, there we go. We can, we're going to have to switch our batteries out. Okay. We'll let it run out, though. Mm -hmm. right. but here's a problem. We have brood comb on one side. You can see the larvae. Mm -hmm. You see that, guys? And we have honey on the other. Mixed in with brood, so mm -hmm. that just gets tossed. We can't use the brood comb. But, you see where I cut right here? Man, am I good. Of course, it was just guessing. But, you know what it was? The thermal imaging. Remember? It showed us right where that was. Well, mm -hmm. sure as shit, I want to show you guys this. This is the edge of it. You see how this is a natural curve here and not cut? That's <laughs> that's so awesome. That is just amazing. That really worked out well. So save the wax. 
Uh, no, I, I not anymore. I used to. Um, it's a pain in the ass to um, render down. Look at that beautiful, beautiful honey, P untouched, pure wild honey. I used to, but now you can get um, really good grade, different types of wax at you know hobby places for so cheap, and so I can't compete, and so I don't anymore. Um, because, you know, at a dollar an hour, I might be worth every cent, but I ain't going to do it. So I do not save the wax. Good question, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Who else has some questions for us? Broodcomb. This is hide number two, you guys, of three. We got, this is such a long ordeal. Do you, do you want to talk about the three different, you know, kinds of bees? We're talking about professional, this, that. So when we say all the wild honeybees. Oh, yeah, that's a really good, yeah, a really good thing to bring up now. Because I do say all the time, all of the unkept, wild, you know, feral, unmanaged, okay, that's a big word, unmanaged, uh, well, it, it means a lot, to me anyway, unmanaged feral hives in the state of Arizona, um, you legally have to have them removed. So what's the difference? These are unmanaged feral hives, right, Th that you're looking at here, guys. This is an unmanaged feral hive. Um, and so these guys are actually illegal to have in your yard or in your, under your shed or whatever. So this guy is really doing right by having us remove them. Now, if you have a uh, an unmanaged feral hive, doesn't need to be under a shed floor. It can be in a bee box, in the white boxes that you see the beekeepers keep um, bees in. It can be in there. If it's unmanaged and has not been taken care of and has gone Africanized, you're in trouble if they sting someone in the state of Arizona. It becomes a duh situation because if your bees sting someone, it's like if your dog kills a neighbor kid, well, what do you think about that, guys? So same thing with these guys. Um, if your bees sting up a neighborhood or kill someone or kill someone's dog, if they want to press it, it's a done deal. I am an expert witness in every case I've ever been on. It's over. It's just done. person with the bees loses. So straightforward. So... The third type, no, this are those, well, the second type is hobbyists, okay, we got the unmanaged feral hive, it's pretty much wherever they live if they're, if they're not taken care of. Okay, then we have the hobbyist, which is, I used to be, hell yeah, I've, everybody wanted to be a beekeeper, everybody still does want to be a beekeeper, and that doesn't mean they should, oh, look, it's strobe lights, <coughs> it's dance time, okay, no, it's not, um, so, um, uh, hobbyists. Okay, well, that's, you know, people that have a, a couple of hives or 20 or some whatever <coughs> that are not doing it professionally to haul around for pollination. Huge difference. We are cutting this up, of course. I think. I don't know what's going on. We'll keep, we'll keep picking away at it. Okay, wow. So much honey, Hosh. Look at this. And this is pollen here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the hobbyists. <clears throat> Bless their socks. Because bees used to be, and I say used to be, I'll explain everything here in a minute. Everybody wanted to keep them. They were the nicest things in the world because they were insects and they, they, they gave us honey and they didn't try to kill us and they were something that we thought we understood. You notice I say thought we understood because we're humans and we're really arrogant about shit thinking we know everything. Oh, you guys aren't going to believe this one. Ah! Look at that. Um, so... Because we, we examine stuff and then we think we know about it, and that's awesome. Uh, so, this is all brood comb I'm throwing away, everybody. Um, the hobbyists, um, you know, a couple of hives, learn everything you can about it, either through... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, it's kind of sad that you're destroying them. Ow! Say that again? It's kind of sad that you're destroying them. That's gorgeous. There's that's pure honey. It's like 20 pounds. A lot of dust on the bottom of it, though. Dirt. Huh? Oh yeah, no, that'll that'll definitely be cut off. When we freeze it solid, it's so easy to work with. Absolutely, easy, easy, easy to work with. And uh, but the the question here is why why destroy these bees? Oh, because they already killed the neighbor's dog. I don't know. You must just be joining us. Yeah. Yeah, which which is fine. Um, all of the wild honey bees in the state of Arizona are genetically Africanized, um, and. I mean, look it up, Google it, you know, find out why, because they are. Uh, we explain this every day, all day. 
and of course you can look it up yourself if you're so inclined. Uh, all the wild honeybees, genetically Africanized in the state of Arizona, they are now in all of the lower 48 states, unfortunately. Okay, I'm at the place where I gotta cut some up. Um, hmm, I don't know what the hell I was running into. Oh, I was running into the 2x4, that's why it was so hard. Durr! Um, uh, so, these bees already killed the neighbor's dog. One of these hives, and they're all Africanized, so that's why we're killing them, guys. Here we go. Oh, well, that's right, I don't really need it right now. Is the light okay for the camera? Yeah. Okay. The hell? Okay, that one died. Definitely going to need a new uh, battery. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to put that on the tripod, you wanna, maybe? You want to grab the battery off the drill? Oh. Um, yeah, after I drill a couple more holes here. Good idea. That hole, should I tell you? <laughs> Where's my thing here? Okay. Look at them coming out of there. Um, so, they already killed the dog. They're all Africanized. Yeah, there's not nothing nice about it. That's why we're killing them. But thank you for joining us. It is a... This is the most dangerous thing you can do. Do not try this at home, anyone. Period. I don't care who you are. Okay. Here we go, guys. Oh. Oh, my God, that's heavy. Oh, keepers. So, oh my God, look at that hose. Isn't that amazing? Good stuff in there. Yep. This is brood. See that, guys? All brood. Look at that. It's a Christmas stocking. Huh? <laughs> from hell. It's a, it's a bee shack. Yeah, you know what it's from? It's from <laughs> Satan Claus. Yeah, not Santa. Satan Claus. <laughs> we never have any fun. Oh, honey, look at this. Look at that. Wow. A little, little bit of brood, yep. So that'll get cut off. And uh, remember, guys, this is hive number two. That's good. the same queen for all three hives? Uh, good question, you guys. No. No. Every hive has its own queen, although one thing we've been seeing with Africanization that is totally in sci-fi as far as beekeepers go is multiple queens in a large hive. I mean, like, multiple queens, which is just <laughs> science fiction. That never, ever used to happen. So, normally, with hives like this, there'll be one queen. And she will live up to five years and lay 1,500 to 2,000 eggs every day for up to five years. Is that a big case of holy shit or what? Oh, I got pure honey here, I can tell. Heavy. Yep. Oh! Oh my god. There we go. Alright, so that's honey. That's honey. That's pollen. Look at that. See that pollen? They do not cap the pollen cells, guys. That's uh, beautiful. It's also called bee bread. Oh, I think we're going to need another bucket here in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Wow, huh? I'm going to put this up on the. Okay, very good. And then we'll get what we need. Very good. Do you want to? Another battery for this light? Yeah, well, just another battery. We're going to come with this is hive number two of three. Right. Holy shit, right, guys? Yeah. So we got a. Can, this, can the queen escape and start a new colony? Oh, that's a really good question. Thank you for asking. Uh, no, thank God. Um, the 30 years of doing this, it's never happened. The queen, um, when she. She needs. If she is going to go somewhere, it's because they're swarming, all right? And when bees swarm, oh, God. When bees swarm, hey, Hosh, can everybody see me on that lens or no? I'm taking a break. Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Break time here again. <coughs> I think we will have to go sit in the air conditioning, both of us. What do you think? Yeah, it sounds good. Take a break. Yeah. Um... Well, let's go ahead and get a lid for this. <coughs> I'm going to finish up this one, and then we'll take everybody into the air conditioning where it's nice and comfortable. Er. Do you have more honey to pull out of there? Yes. <laughs> Look at that, all pollen. You want to put it in here? And honey, yeah, if it'll fit. <coughs> I got another one. Wow. Yeah, we're getting a shitload of honey. Oh, if you guys want to get any honey, 
<coughs> did you tell him about that horse? I did, but you can tell him again. I can? Yeah. Well, I think I will. Um, we uh, have our website, killerbeeguy.com. And if you guys want some honey, go get some honey. Actually, we have a 20% uh, off special right now. If you put in uh, uh, KBG, that's Killer Bee Guy number one, you uh, get 20% off. Yay! Um, okay, we're, we're definitely ready for a new uh, tub here, Hosh. Okay. And I'm getting down there as far as uh, as far as uh, getting about done with this bunch. My goodness. So the queen, no, she cannot go somewhere else and start a new hive. Thank God. Life is hard enough. Um, well, now when she swarms, she does, right? That's kind of like a planned deal on their part. And it's nature's way of propagating the area with bees. So, in that case, the old queen that's already been on her mating flight, she's all ready to, she's been laying eggs, she's ready to start laying more. She will, um, uh, take off with 10 or 20 percent of the bees and go find a new place to live. But with a situation like this, it's not going to happen. And in my 30 years of doing this, it never has. So that's a <laughs> really good thing. Um, they, she, she needs seven to 10,000 bees, preferably the bigger amount, to start a new hive somewhere else. Well, with a war like this, when we leave, before we leave, we always make sure that we knock down more than that. We knock down so many that there's absolutely no possible way that a new hive can start. Now I'm reaching under here to see if there's any comb under there. There is not. So this usually is like this, guys, where it'll only be right here. Where, where between the floor studs, for some reason, they don't like to venture beyond that. I don't know why, but they don't. All right, so... <sighs> Three hives under one shed. This is ridiculous. Oh, I'm so glad this guy's having us take care of it, though. Um, so, no, the queen will not go start a new hive. What do you think? Break time? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. All this, this oh, that should go in. Three? Yeah. No, no. That's all, honey. That's all honey. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, look at that. I got a little yeah. excitement on my hands. I'm, we have a faucet out yet. We actually have a faucet. Oh, so I'll let you scrape that down if you would, and then let's go cool off with the with the Killer Bee Nation. Ah. Wow, huh? Woo! Hi guys. Ah. Hi, it's me. See Tic Tac both hands. <laughs> we got spanked for uh, I don't know what for actually, but Tic Tac. Uh, I don't know why they do what they do. I have no idea. You got some water there, Hosh? I do, I do. You got what do you want? Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Here, I can hold this. Oh, that's good. Oh, my God. Killer bee nation. Holy crap. I tell you, this is not a record. Uh, this is really a bit much. I mean, three hives in one shed. Now, I can't wait to get into this other hive, huh, Hosh? I mean, this is going to be yeah. like... We're getting a lot of honey out of this. Yeah, we're probably over 100, over 100 pounds right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, over 100 pounds. But you can go to... Uh, now, a word from our sponsor. Hi, hey, would you like to buy some honey? You can go to killerbeeguy.com. And that was a word from our sponsor. <laughs> anyway, um, tomorrow we have a huge one you guys got to come with. Um, it's uh, The bees are hanging off. Okay, there's an old POS uh, shack out in the middle of nowhere, apparently. I don't know. It's in Hereford, so middle of nowhere. And this old falling down shack, I mean, like the ceiling is caved in. <laughs> And they don't even know how many decades the bees have been there. I can't believe after 30 years of doing this that I haven't just destroyed all the hives. And that just goes to show you that um, we're not getting rid of even one 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 hundredth of a percent of the hives that are in Cochise County. We're, we're not even touching them by destroying these hives, which is unfortunate because... They're all Africanized and they're all dangerous. We're just getting the ones that have either already caused problems or that people have, you know, said, well, let's not have any problems and got to jump on it. So tomorrow, this, um, this, yeah, certainly, yep, I got that thing to hold on here. Um, so anyway, tomorrow these bees are hanging up. He said, you look inside and there's three or four feet of comb hanging down from this collapsed ceiling with comb going up into the damn ceiling. Oh, I can't wait. 
Oh, we're going to get a good night's uh, rest with that one, aren't we? Good. I mean, I'm going to need one tonight after this shit, that's for sure. Uh, has anybody got any uh, questions for us while we're cooling off? Just a second. Is it working? How are the other... This is a good one. <clears throat> right on. How are there three hives so close together and survive if they steal from each other or fight each other? Oh, that's a great question. They would think it would be... Uh, yeah, it's not obvious. Good question. So, um, it's kind of like neighbors. <laughs> okay? Neighbors that hate each other can live next to each other as long as they don't cross each other's lines then they can live there that's how it is with with honey beehives have you ever um been driving down the road and seen uh, pallets of beehives out in a field of course you have everybody has and is that better okay anyway um they can live right next to each other they just can't visit each other now how does that what prevents them there ain't no walls in there right the guard bees that's what does it, the guard bees. So the, the, there's guard bees in every hive, and their only job is to perceive a threat to the hive. Well, you don't know what that's going to be until uh, you, it's too late, usually, nowadays. It can be everything's fine, and then the next minute they don't like the color of your shirt. You don't know what's going to set these Africanized bees up. But their main job out in just everyday life is to prevent these neighboring bees from coming and stealing honey. Well, they look the same, at least to us, all right? Every hive smells differently to every other hive, just like people. I always, the analogy I use is, we see a beehive as an organism much like ourselves, with each bee being a cell and the queen being the heart and the brain. And just like with humans, every um, hive is different than every other hive. They smell different, they are different. Temperaments are different. But with the Africanization and actually European hives, all of the feral hives that we have in, in the United States and in the Western Hemisphere are mutts. They're crossbreeds, right? So, so that's what keeps them from, uh, they can live next to each other, they just can't visit each other. Good question. We've got a few folks with us, Hosh? Yeah, what do you do with the pollen? Oh, uh, the pollen... We actually eat, of course. I mean, it is so good. But the po okay, when you get what we do is we make Viking honey out of it. Now, I came up with that because when you get honey out of normal beehives, I'm going to turn this back up a little bit. It ain't going to bother anybody. I don't care. Tough shit. Uh, when you get honey out of normal beehives, <coughs> you're pulling the frames up, right? Uh, off, off of, out of the boxes. Well, there is very little or no pollen in those frames because it is a different storage area within the hive for the bees and a different collection technique for the beekeeper. So what we do with this wild pollen, and you saw us putting the pollen and honey all in the same bins, whereas the brood comb went away, all of the pollen and honey and a lot of the propolis that we get, that, that, that we scrape off of wherever we can get it, we mix that up into a, it's kind of like the witch's cauldron actually, boil, boil, toil, and trouble. We warm it up enough in a great big thing with, in our five gallon buckets, mix it up, we warm it up just enough to get it to separate. Because, and that mix, mix and mix and mix, it's very labor intensive. And <coughs> we mix that, and so all, our Viking honey has all of the propolis and pollen in it, whereas any honey you get at the store does not. It doesn't have any minuscule amounts in it. So that's what we do with the pollen. And of course, take it home and, and eat it because it is so nutritious, it's ridiculous. Honey and pollen are the only natural existing foods that have all of the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, enzymes, everything you need. Your cells need to live. Got that? And the main difference between, um, as far as uh, food qualities go, between honey and pollen is honey lasts forever. Pollen has about a one-year lifespan. That's about it. And then it's, then it's just, in, you know, it's not, it doesn't have any vitamins and minerals left, a very minute, very small amount. Honey, on the other hand, they found in Egypt, down in the tombs, 4,000 years old, still just fine. Not, didn't even lose any of the vitamin and mineral content. What in the hell is that about, right? Awesome stuff, you guys. Can you explain what brood comb is? Yeah, brood comb. Um, so brood, there's, there's basically three sections to the hive. There is, in each one of those little cells that you saw, 
Those are canning jars for bees that they'll either store honey or pollen in or raise babies in. Three sections, okay? So, of course, the honey storage is what we're after. The pollen storage is what we're after. And the brood, that's where they raise the babies. That's where the larvae are. We don't care about that. I personally have eaten larvae, of course. I think that Line and Kugel's beer and uh, whiskey might have been involved. I'm just saying. But um, it wasn't for me. I just, I didn't, some countries is a delicacy. Have at it. The, the, the brood comb for us gets tossed, and we can't let it get mixed in because it's protein. It's pure protein. It's meat, and it'll rot. And so we don't want that in our honey, of course. So good question. That's what happens with that. With that. Good questions, you guys. You guys are awesome. Now, if you mix the honey with the pollen, does the pollen have a longer shelf life? Yes, absolutely. That's another good point. If you, depending on what you mix with honey, honey and sugar has long been a preservative. All right, it long been a preservative. And so, you know, that's why if you make preserves with honey, instead of, they, that's what they used to make it with until sugar came into fashion. Uh -huh. um, you mix something with honey, it's going to last a, a hell of a lot longer. You mix your fruit with honey and store it that way in jars. Um, people even do that. We do it with all sorts of things, actually. So, yes, that will help. That will preserve the pollen integrity for indefinitely if it's mixed in with the honey. Because there are three things that rot food, all right? Moisture, heat, and oxygen. Moisture, heat, and oxygen. So when I started freeze-drying my own food, which I do, I have a food freeze-dryer, not a dehydrator, a freeze-dryer. And so I learned that, that heat, oxygen, and moisture are what rot food. So the water content of honey is so low that it's hydroscopic. So that is why, that's the main reason that honey can last forever, but um, even if it gets hot. So that's weird, right? Now if you mix it with moisture, if you mix honey with water, it'll ferment and you end up with mead or honey wine, M-E-A-D, honey wine. And that's, I make honey wine, I've been doing it for 35 years. And that's how I got started with all this actually. So. Um, yes, it will keep the integrity of whatever you mix with it for quite a long time. Good questions, you guys. Do the bees get less aggressive after the queen is killed because there's nothing to protect? That used to be the case. Um, we The remnant bees, all right, that's what we're talking about here. When we would leave a, a job, the we would tell people, well, the remnant bees are going to ball up here near where their front door was and they'll die off over the coming days and they won't be aggressive. That's what we used to tell people. Now these Africanized bees adapt every year. They change and they uh, unfortunately get more aggressive. So what we're seeing now is remnant bees being mad, and I'm talking bouncing off the windshield mad, for up to two weeks. It's horrifying. It's absolutely horrifying. They will, um, yeah, just stay mad. And also a really weird thing that we've seen this year in particular, which is even scarier, is when we're in the middle of a job, like now half the bees that are out there when we go back out there will be robber bees trying to steal honey. They will, any honey that dripped on the floor or on the dirt or anything, anything that's left over, they'll clean that right up. It'll go away. We have seen robber bees being aggressive. What the hell is that about? Because robber bees, like I always tell everyone, are like bees on flowers. Normally they just want to get the goods and go home. They don't care about us at all. Boy, I hope that doesn't change because that's horrifying. If robber bees and bees that are foraging become aggressive, we're screwed. I mean, what do we do? All wear bee suits all the time? I mean, it's a good look and everything, don't you think? Huh? Does this bee suit make me look fat? Stop it. I don't want to hear it. Anyway. So what do you think, Osha? Are we ready for hive number three? Well, one, one more question. Oh, yeah, sure, of course. How do professional beekeepers keep their hives from becoming Africanized? Oh, that's really a good question. How do professional beekeepers keep their hives from becoming Africanized? That's great. Sometimes they don't if the hot hives are not too hot. Uh, just like every Rottweiler is not the same as every other Rottweiler, same thing with the bees, these Africanized bees. The problem is that one minute they may seem like a docile uh, golden retriever, and the next all of a sudden they're Satan. You just don't know when that's going to happen. And so, but with big beekeepers, with the big boys, and they're for pollination and whatnot, and have 10,000 hives or whatever, they, everything's in-house. They breed their own queens. They 
they breed they have nukes they breed everything everything's in the house it's just a business that's all it is there's no romance about it it's uh it the bees are farm animals is what it is and so they breed their own bees in-house and if any bee if a bee if a hive gets sick knock it out and put in a new one if they get too mean knock it out and put in a new one who cares why just keep the production going keep the pollination going so good question really good question so what do you think? Are we ready to go? Uh, yeah, let's go finish it. Let's go rock and roll. Yeah. All right, guys, come on with us. We're gonna go. Uh, not have any fun at all. <laughs> More honey. Woo! Hey, Hosh. Yeah. Check this out. Hey, <laughs> we like it when there's a faucet, don't we? You want to use that or not yet? Yeah, can I hand you this? I wish you would. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we like it when there's a faucet. So, uh, And you'll notice that right now, even though we're really close to the, to the you know, where the, the scene of the crime, they're not, well, yeah, I take it back. Now they're aggressive as hell. Shit, i got to put my gloves on. Guys. God damn it. Yeah, well, I'll come over here. Now i got to throw my gloves on quick because they're being pissy little fuckers. Yeah. Of course, we smell like venom. You know, I mean, they drip venom on our nets and our everything and sting our gloves and sting the camera and sting everything. So we are the enemy. What do you got? Everything good? Just checking mics. All right. So, all right. Oh, three hives in one. This is ridiculous. Oh, my God. Okay, you guys ready? Let's go. Oh, I think I'll take, lay down and take a nap. Oh, hi, everybody. Oh. God, it's exhausting doing this shit. I'm fine, I'm fine. Just taking a nap. <laughs> Hosh is like, oh no. Not moth to moth resuscitate. You're gonna die. You ain't getting none. <laughs> They're coming out. They're not that nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clunk. Have we got that pry bar? Right there. Thank you. Okay, guys, here we go. Hold on, let me get the camera. Okay. Come on, guys. Come on down. <coughs> oh, my God. Is this the big one or what? It's a good one. Look at that. Wow. My goodness, you guys. Wow. That'll be easy to scrape down, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow, guys. Holy cow. Thank you. It's so mushy, it's so warm. Oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful comb, guys. Untouched honey. Three hives. Wow, just absolute treasure. That's got too much dirt on it. We're going to throw that away. Here, let me put them back. Thank you. Otherwise, he's stepping on it. No, I oh, never, I'm never stepped on honey. Slip slide in a way. All right. There you go. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, any any honey, any comb that is not 100%. Look at how big this is. Holy cow, guys. This is all brood comb. This is where they raise the babies. Useless for us. Unfortunately. It's called the honey pit. Yeah, the honey pit, no lie. Look at all that. That's all brood. Man, we're getting a few hundred pounds of brood out of this too, huh? Look at how deep this is. All brood. Now, and this just goes to show you, like I was saying, each hive is different than every other hive. This is really um, all brood. Remember the other two that we just did were like shitloads of honey? Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Ugh. That's honey, and that is brood. That's all where they raise the babies. See if I split it like this, you can see the larvae. See the larvae, guys? So, anyway, ah, cheapers. This is pollen. You can see the pollen in there? Let me show you that, guys, that. Um, thank God. All right. We got a little bit of something here. Pollen. That's good. We like pollen. 
So we did get that front door pretty well sealed up here. I have a feeling that when we come when we cut this one up, that's where the honey is. Uh, just because that's how they normally. Uh huh. Oh darn. Okay, I got more dirt here. Damn it. Oh well. I'm reaching under to see if they have built um, further under these two by fours, and thank God they haven't. Uh, I mean, you know. Wow. I don't know how far. It goes. Yeah, we do. We saw the thermal. We know exactly how far it goes, right? So. Okay, I'm going to cut this up, scrape this down so that it's done. It'll just take me two seconds. Milk, milk, milk. All right, guys. And now this is where we get the, the propolis, because propolis is the glue that holds the hive together. And so it, wherever this comb is attached to this wood, that's where propolis is. So when we scrape it like that, we're getting, um, getting the uh, propolis. All right, three more cuts, guys. Woo! This is amazing. I'm so, I'm so amazed. Now what do you think? Should I go ahead and bring? Uh, this is it for. No, no, I've got another bin over here. You do? That do okay, it. good. Here goes, guys. Woohoo! See that fall? Mm. Didn't exactly want that. Oh, damn it. Oh, boy. Here we go. Look at that. Wow. That's all I can say. Wow. Now, this is unfortunate. This is all... This is really cool, though. Normally, you see brood comb that has caps on it. That's all fresh brood. Look at this. Uncapped. Look at that. See the larvae, everyone? That's fresh brood that they just laid. They are in busy production. Now this is nectar. Okay, now you see all the other honey that we got was capped? See how glistening this is? This is nectar. Now the difference between nectar and honey is water content. So nectar, you see, when they get nectar from the flowers, it's about, oh, 97% water. Well then through their magic and their alchemy, they, through um, digestive enzymes, and dehydration primarily, they turn nectar into honey. And it can take them up to a month. So, yeah, making this stuff is not instantaneous. It takes a long time. And uh, it's a lot of work. And that's another reason they're very keen to steal it from each other. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to sit down here. <sighs> what do you think, Hosh? Yeah. I'm going to cut this dirt off. Yeah, home stretch. Oop. All right, I don't know if we have any honey in here. We might not need another tub, unfortunately, I say, right? Yeah. But we take what we can. So we literally take the money and the honey, guys. So here's a bunch of brood, everyone, that has the larvae that has been capped and that has not. And, of course, for us, we don't eat that unless there's a lot of whiskey involved. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, no, I'm not. Uh, uh, that's some gonna be some honey. Oh, now we got a little bit. Um, if we, that's a nice one. Now I don't think we're gonna need because see this, this is too much nectar, right? Now we can't just sell the nectar the way it is because it's too much water content. And remember how I was talking about mead? It'll ferment. Oops, gotta cut that off the top there. We don't want that. That gets tossed. Yep. Yeah, thank you. So now here we have a section, look at this, is really cool where older comb and newer comb is. You see this, Hosh? See this right here? Yep. So that gets cut off because that's brood. <coughs> All right, brood and that's dirty, so it gets tossed. And we're home stretching it here. Now what we do after this is we start putting shit away and we uh, get out our um, under automotive undercoating and coat everything where they were. Now I developed that technique because Wherever they have been, they leave smells or pheromones that will soak into the wood or concrete or whatever they're attached to that will attract new swarms into the future. So, we don't want that. Amazing, huh? I think we kind of did it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now we're in cleanup line. I guess we can put it on the tripod and get to work. Start spraying it down. Spraying it down and, yeah.
Thank you so much for coming along. We love you guys. I'm sorry. I'm just beat to shit. I can't answer any more questions or nothing. Uh, but we'll let you know in a minute if we have more to do. <coughs> and Hosh will be putting these up on TikTok, of course. Um, it's a hell of a vid, don't you think, Hosh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. Thank you so much. We love you guys so much for coming along. Thank you, thank you. Uh, sh you know, share. And, of course, um, if you share them, that's really cool because I think TikTok likes that. I don't know. I just don't want to get bumped off. So, you know, we love having you guys along. So hit the, um, hit the uh, some button. Hit all the fucking buttons. I don't know. I'm delirious. <laughs> Hit all the buttons. Hit all the buttons. I'm Share, fucking... like, follow. Yeah, there you like go. Follow and shit. Get some honey, Do it all. Oh, my God. I'm fucking wiped. All right, you guys. Love you. Uh, and go to YouTube and check out our other shit. We'll see you later.